Hi, I'm Shane, and I'll be presenting part two of my talk on effective instruction tuning, data methods, and new abilities. So this part of the talk covers the results of training on the Flan collection, uh, both for Flan T5 and Flan Palm, which are models discussed in depth in these two papers linked at the bottom. So the results and takeaways are really asking how far can instruction tuning get with just academic data sets and without human preference data? So as a quick refresher, uh, the flan palm model combines a number of ingredients. The first is the largest model at that time to be instruction tuned at 540 billion parameters. We use 1800 fine tuning tasks from the, from the flan collection, which is larger than previous sets. And we also include chain of thought reasoning data in that fine tuning collection. So what are the benefits of this? Uh, there are six. The first is we're able to achieve uh, state-of-the-art performances on some held out benchmarks. We also are obtaining better human usability for non-academic data sets, even though we're instruction tuning with academic data sets. And uh, we're unlocking new zero shot chain of thought reasoning capabilities which previously weren't available to Palm. Fourthly, instruction tuning we find works well across different model sizes, architectures, and model types. And uh, interestingly, it really improves the computational efficiency when you're doing single target or single task fine tuning a second time. And, si and lastly, it reduces toxic generation significantly. So let's look at result one. Um, firstly, MMLU is a very common uh, benchmark of 57 college exams. And while the previous POM model obtained about 69%, uh, and forecasts at the time said that uh, by 2023 and 2024, they didn't expect the best models to be beating 75%, our team was really excited when uh, the Flan POM model, the largest size, was able to beat that benchmark and start to approach human expert performance. But since then, uh, newer models have already gotten into the 80 plus percent performance on this benchmark, ap approaching human expert um, scores. But what if we keep the base model size the same? So we use T5XL, 3 billion parameters, uh, as the base model for all of our comparisons to prior collections of instruction tuning uh, methods. And uh, this allows us to disentangle the size uh, the effect of model size and the effect of training with our methods. And we do find that um, the T5XL using the full flan collection as the dark blue achieves better results than if we use the original flan collection from 2021, or if we use uh, all of the data sets and prompt source from which T0 is trained on or supernatural instructions. Now, these are all academic compilations of data sets, which were the best at the time. Um, but they're also not distilled from larger models like Alpaca was. So the data is uh, less restrictively licensed. The second result uh, shows that instruction tuning does improve human usability on non-academic tasks, even though we did use only academic tasks for fine tuning. So here you can see in blue, the, um, the win rate according to human preferences in a blind trial of the flan palm responses versus the palm responses. <clears throat> and to do this, we compiled 100 manually curated questions uh, or prompts that tested creativity, reasoning from long articles and other context, uh, arithmetic and verbal reasoning, planning, explanation. And for a subset of them, we also templatized them in a chain of thought setting to see how that would affect performance and as well as a few shot. And we found in 80% of cases, Flan Palm was preferred for these types of creative open generation prompts uh, to the Palm responses. The third result looks at fine tuning with chain of thought data and how that unlocks new zero shot reasoning abilities. Um, so let's look at the 540 billion parameter model and it's benchmarking its results on Big Bench Hard, which is a subset of the Big Bench um, suite of tasks, which were also held out during training. So if we look at the gray bars, these are the Palm model itself. And um, this is just zero shot, whereas this is chain of thought templates. And so we see 
um, that in both cases, there are no exemplars. So typically when you do chain of thought, um, it's in a few shot settings. So you, sh you show input example, uh, output example explanation, output example answer. And you do that a few times before giving it the input and asking for the explanation. So the model learns the pattern in the context of uh, the larger prompt. But in this case, we're asking for the explanation or the chain of thought reasoning um, without any exemplars. So it's purely in a zero shot setting. And so the original POM model, when you give it the chain of thought reasoning prompt actually does worse than if you just ask for the answer from the get-go. However, you can get even better performance with chain of thought, uh, zero shot chain of thought, when um, the model has been trained with instruction tuning data that contains chain of thought data like Lon Palm. And we see that as an increase from this blue bar to this blue dotted bar here. The fourth result uh, shows that flawed instruction tuning improves um, models of many different sizes, architectures, and types. So here we see a variety of models with different sizes. And so if we look at this row here, this is the Palm 540 billion parameter model and um, averaging over a set of held out tasks, which I believe includes MMLU and Big Bench Hard, it gets about 49%. But comparing that to Flan Palm's performance, which is 58%, there's a 9% improvement highlighted in blue. And we can see that these improvements are consistent across models of different sizes, like these T5, Flan T5 models, which we open sourced, uh, as well as the much larger models. And I'd also note that these are encoder decoder, whereas these are decoder. And these last two have different pre-training objectives. And although we didn't release results in them, we also did some experiments on uh, sparse models uh, not just dense models, and found that it also saw similar improvements for those. The fifth result looks at um, how instruction tuning can affect when we want to fine tune for a single task, and specifically the computational efficiency of doing that. So here we have, uh, we're evaluating on a set of metrics. So let's look at the bool Q example. Here, the blue bar so I'll note that bool Q, uh, the training set was included in FLAN, it was held in, but here we're eval uh, evaluating in the validation set. And the blue bar is where we take the T5 model and we just fine tune it directly as people normally or, or um, before instruction tuning used to do most commonly. And we see the performance of it. And then we're comparing that to where we take T5 and we fine tune on all of FLAN. So not just bull Q, but all of the tasks. And we're not doing a second stage of single target fine tuning. We're just, this is the performance on FLAN T5. The red bar is where we take FLAN T5. So T5 followed by instruction tuning, followed by uh, single target fine tuning on bull Q and we see its performance. And the pattern we're seeing here is that sometimes the yellow bar is above the blue bar, sometimes the blue bar is above the yellow bar, meaning that sometimes it's better just to fine tune on the one task, sometimes fine tuning on all the tasks actually is better for the one task. But uh, in all cases, the red bar is the highest, indicating that using Flan T5 as your base model for single target fine tuning will get you consistently better results. And that's true not just for held in tasks, but also for held out tasks, which were not included at all in uh, FLAN fine tuning. So as well as achieving higher um, performance, you can also have faster convergence. So here we see for the held out tasks that were not included in FLAN fine tuning, uh, looking at the log scale of the number of fine tuning steps, we we're just fine tuning on uh, this task. And these are the validation accuracies. We see that we uh, hit the maximum performance much faster when we're using FLAN T5 as opposed to T5 as the base model. So what does that mean? It means that we should all probably be using uh, FLAN T5 or your favorite instruction tune model as your new base model as it's more efficient as well as likely to get better results. The sixth and final result uh, shows that instruction tuning reduces toxic generation now, the reason why this is interesting is because we're using um, not human preference data or reinforcement learning from human feedback or um, anything resembling uh, more modern alignment uh, instruction tuning sets. 
we're simply using all of the academic sets, data sets available in Flon collection. And we're finding that just using that, we're still able to see a large decrease across different model sizes in how toxic the generations are. And this is a benchmark on real toxicity prompts, a common toxic generation evaluation suite. Another evaluation benchmark is representational bias, which is used in many of the Google papers, including Palm. And here we can see uh, for different topics, sensitive topics of interest, where there are societal stereotypes that are prevalent, um, the average and altogether the distribution of toxic responses to different prompts is much lower for the blue uh, dots than the gray dots. Uh, indicating that flan palm is less likely to generate a toxic response. If you're interested in reading more about these uh, results or trying out some of the models, I'm attaching links um, to the GitHub to generate the data, some demos, and also uh, the papers. Feel free to check them out. Thank you so much for listening. And if you enjoyed this talk, feel free to follow me on Twitter. Thank you.